the story of who you are, the story of your product, the story of how it came to be is so, so important, especially in tech, because it's, it's so easily forgotten. Um, and so I'm going to shut up now. I'll let Leah take over, and I'll let her tell you why a uh, story is so impo important in technology. Leah? Great. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Um, very excited to be here and to have all this wonderful technology in my home. I have spoken to, uh, gosh, over 100,000 people in my, in my day, but never like this, and it's incredibly exciting. It's incredibly exciting to see that this is possible and to have an opportunity to talk about something incredibly old school like story. In fact, it's so old school, actually, that uh, I'm going to ask you to go all the way back, at least in your imagination, to the caveman, because that's where all this started. And, uh, you know, I wasn't there, but I have a speaking suspicion that what they were doing was trying to explain to each other with their sticks on the stones exactly what kind of meaning they were trying to make out of everything. And that's why our stories are so important. Because whereas technology is amazing, I love it. Here's my little phone, can't live without it. Um, and don't even realize how much technology there actually is that's taking care of my life. It's um, the stories that actually give us the meaning. So I think of it, although I don't, I don't come from the tech space, I think, of, I think of the tech is the hardware and the story is the software. And uh, it's soft because it deals into what matters to us as human beings, which is how we feel, how we relate, who we trust, who we don't trust, and all that kind of stuff. And that's where story comes in. So what I'm going to, um, what I want to say is I'm going to ask you to do something that for the next half hour while we're together, I'm going to ask you to do something that um, comes stems from a for me, one of my great, my most favorite brand gurus. And I have to tell you uh, that I think brand gurus are everywhere. And this one came from George Carlin, the comedian, who might roll over in his grave if somebody mentioned that he was a brand guru. But the truth is he had quite a brand. And he said, think off center. And that to me is what makes a powerful brand and what makes a really great brand story. And what lands up happening for so many of us, myself included in the work that I've, that I've been doing, is we mistake what people really value for what we think they value. So the reason why you really need a story is because people, well, a bunch of reasons, but primarily people don't buy what you do. They're not buying what you do. They don't buy what your product does. What they buy is how you make them feel. And stories are about feelings. So um, I'm just going to run through a whole bunch of content here. I'm going to be putting glasses on and off because part of my story is that, you know, I need glasses. Um, and it's not going to be perfect, and I can see my hair isn't either, but it makes no difference because stories do not have to be completely linear. Mine sure isn't. Yours isn't. A um, little bit of element of surprise, of delight, all those kind of things work really well for everybody's audience as I found even and I've even done work for a cemetery and I can tell you it worked for their audience too so whether your whether your audience is the wildly living and young or your audience are people who are no longer on the planet the point is everybody wants and likes a good story so what's the big deal with the story like how come all of a sudden why are we hearing so much about this stuff well they've been around forever obviously and um, but you know you need them we need them now that without going into a whole big spiel about what's happened in marketing. I think if you are aware of these things to some extent, which I know you are, you recognize that the internet has definitely changed everything up as well as just time itself. So, uh, you know, the story gives us meaning. It connects us. It connects our business to other people. But why it's important really is primarily because if you don't have one at this point in how marketing rolls, how people buy, you basically uh, don't have a chance at all of being someone's brand. And um, the truth of the matter is, is that even like some of the biggest companies, and a year ago I worked for one of the largest tech companies in the world I was calling to help with, the, with their story. They've got more money than, um, I don't know who, but more money than anybody that I know. Um, but they didn't have their story straight. So getting your story straight is, uh, is really important to, to the survival of a brand and ultimately your brand no matter what you've got you can have the greatest product in the world 
but if you don't have a story around it, it your your business will only be as strong as your stories. So you need it for those reasons, and you need it to get you know you need a story because if you're going to the bank and you're trying to get a loan or you're working with a you know a, a, a um, an investor of some sort, they want to know what your story is. So um, you know uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. Um, but then really what I'm most interested in is your story. Um, so here's my story in a nutshell. I grew up with a bunch of snobs, lovely people. My parents were, were very creative, very artistic people, and I, I, I loved them. And they were terrific, and they were artists. And they, had all, they wanted all their kids to be artists. And in order to do this, when we were children, my parents used to take us to symphonies every week and, you know, to see all these works of art and all this stuff in the hopes that we would get very excited and follow in the footsteps because they were both concert pianists. And what happened with me was that um, they took me to, all, you know, to see all these great exhibits and things. And the only thing that ever actually really rocked my world was the day when I was six years old and the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. I don't know if you know of these things. Perhaps some of you are too young. Um, you, uh, but, but there's this thing called the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. It used to drive down the street, and it was Oscar Mayer, and then you'd have this little, this little play, this little song, and all this stuff. And you know, it had, um, it was beautiful. It had incredible architecture. Um, it had a song. It played a song. It. Uh, it, you know, they, he handed out these little, like, little, little tiny hot dogs, and then he had the Oscar Mayer, like, whistles that he gave everybody. And it got a great story, and he told the story of Oscar Mayer and why it was that it was so important for him to make sure that people had good hot dogs. And I was hooked. Like, in that moment, it was like I was mesmerized. It was almost, I mean, it was just, it was just like a cosmic experience because I had had my first exposure to a brand and my first masterpiece that I ever saw. And it was at that moment that I knew that there was that in in business there was a lot of art, and I believe that for some reason my little head lodged in at that time that every business is an art. Every business has an artistic story to tell, an artistic vision. Um, suffice it to say, when I wanted to go off to college, my parents instructed me. I think I'm the only person I've ever met who was told, "We're not sending you to college so that you can go into business." Um, I, uh, I, so I, I studied writing a lot, and I landed up writing and publishing um, a lot of books. I published a lot of books for kids, and um, they were, they were, and some of them still are very successful around the world, for which I'm eternally grateful. And I love doing it. And uh, but what really came out of that was I uh, was realizing a lot about the connection between what makes a great kids book and what makes a great business brand. And um, what happened was, is I went to New York, and I had, I had a, a, a couple of book deal, and something amazing happened. I discovered I needed to eat. And so uh, in fin in, I had to find my way, and I was introduced to this wonderful man who had started a, a, the first, at that time, the first executive conference center that was very high class, high end. People from, you know, Tom Peters would come there, the, you know, and all these different people at the time who were the big wigs. And um, somebody introduced me to him. Someone actually, I, I started working with somebody who was a correspondent from ABC, and they introduced me to him. And they, he brought me in, and he said, "You know, if if you make any sense to me, I'll I'll pay you. And if not, you're out the door. I said, Fine." So this was before anybody was talking about story and business. Nobody talked about that. Um, you know, it was a, a totally different time. And anyway, he liked what I had to say, and I started working with these companies. And so. I started with being called into some big companies and actually working with executives in the same way that I work with people today that I work with, um, showing them that what makes their story appealing now is the same thing that appealed to them when they were like a little kid. And this is not about you know anything like babyish. It's really about recognizing that the best stories are simple, memorable. They touch the heart. There's something magic about them, but for some reason, when you can tap into who, who and, and what is really listening, the, the, the yours is the story that people ask to hear over and over and over again. They cannot help it. I don't know why I hear this over and over again, and I know from my own experience also of being with 145,000 kids, which is why I have bags under my eyes today. Um, I don't know why 
it is that a kid will go to a, have a choice of a thousand books and go to a bookshelf and keep pulling one down, the same book over and over and over again. But I do know it's that same mechanism within us that people have a thousand choices of brands and they go and they pick the one that has the story that they just won't let go of. And it's that magic that makes the story. And I know that you most likely, like almost everyone I've ever worked with, have a lot more story than you can imagine and a better story than you think you have to tell. Because let's face it, I mean, you're busy doing the work that you do. You're creating product, you're creating a business, you're thinking along the lines that you're thinking. You're not, you're not thinking, you're not wired for story. You're not thinking about your story. You're not thinking the way that someone liked it. I think. You're busy doing what you do. So this is why I'm asking you to think off center a little bit from the time that we're together because um, you actually are a much more of a storyteller than you are. And I'm going to try and give you some simple tips because I find for a lot of people, um, you know, uh, the hard part is figuring out how do I get started? How do I do this? So as I mentioned initially, I, I, um, I have some cheat sheets that I use. And really what it is is that the first thing I, I this, this isn't actually a cheat sheet, but this is for me my definition of what a brand is because just as many, just as many people that seem to be confused about why do I need a story and what is it are people that are confused about what a brand is. And I am, and I am very clear I am not the end all and be all. I'm not Webster of the brand world here. I'm just defining it as I see it and as I come to experience it working with some of the largest brands in the world, all sorts of startups um, and uh, you know, just dangling around learning like everyone else. So to me, what a brand is, a brand, the difference between a brand and your product is a brand lives on the shelf. You're, and so it's like I can go into a shelf metaphorically, of course, if I'm buying your product offline or whatever, but a brand lives on the shelf. It's something I can pull down off the shelf. I mean, a product, pro I'm sorry, a product lives on the shelf and your brand lives in my mind. So when you're writing your stories, what you want to be remembering is that your job as the storyteller, as the person who wants me to buy your product, is to touch my heart first and then my mind. Heart and then mind. What we mostly land up doing is thinking, I, this is an intellectual process, so let me just tell you about all the different factors and features. Um, so how I, how I suggest to people who are just getting started, um, which is all of us, um, that, you know, to be pulling and learning and just grabbing everything you can about what a story is and isn't from everywhere. Like, as an example, like last night I was watching the show The Voice. And um, I don't know if, how, how many of you watched the show. It's my first season. I love it. But the point is, is that, um, you know, Adam was coaching one about somebody and he, was, he, he said something that was spot on about what makes an important brand. First of all, your brand has a voice. You may not be a singer, but your speech, your way of talking, your way of being has a voice, just like on the voice. So these people are up there and they're like in the, you know, the, I don't know, the drop dead round or whatever it is. It's something where they're competing and they're each picking a song. It's a song that's already really popular. It's a song that's well known, but it's nonetheless a song. And their job is to interpret that song in such a way, as Adam said, is you have to make us Feel if you want us to be absolutely clear that you're our only choice, no matter what. There's not even a choice about whether or not you're our choice. You have to convince us. You have to be convincing that you feel every word in your soul. That's what he said to this person. I thought that's a great suggestion. <clears throat> so that's a great part of branding. You've got to feel it. Now you may ask, as um, so I watched. I watched the voice. I watched Shark Tank a lot to learn about brand, brand stories. Because on the Shark Tank, if you ever watch that show, and I promise I won't, I won't break it down to some of the other shows I watch, but um, on the Shark Tank, everybody's in there telling a story. But here's the deal about telling a story. People think, I've got to have a story, and how do I tell it? Your, your brand, your business is showing and telling stories about you all the time, whether or not you know it or not. So... It's not just the text that you got in your copy. It's not just your, your graphics. Um, it's, uh, and it's not something etched in stone. It can shift as long as it's steeped in your values. 
but it is everything. So when people say, well, I'm not a writer, you don't have to be a writer. What you want to get to is the essence and seeing what it is that you have, the story that you have to tell, not, you know, the story that you have to tell, the one that kind of pulls you together, that's made you, brought you to this point. Um, and when you get connected with that, when you recognize that, it's like a tiny connection. It's like putting in a plug to something that I never know how to do. It's like, you know, Lisa being over here and sort of like laughing, going, you're already set up for this. So are you. You are already wired for this perfect story. It's there. Um, you've got one. Uh, fear not. And if you don't have one, um, you can make one up. Uh, you know, um, you know, using a, a gym shoe analogy, and this is not just about a tagline, but Nike, you know, the, the tagline, just do it, which is a great, obviously a, a very wonderful tagline. The whole story of Nike was not necessarily based on Phil Knight's experience as much as his love for the Greek, for Greek mythology and the, and the mythology of Nike. So your brand story may come from, you know, uh, a fictional character, another hero, your own life but you will resonate with it. And one thing's for sure is no matter whether or not your, your story seems funny or romantic or whatever the story is that matches your product, the one thing you do not want it to be is a mystery. People, you, need it, you want to get it clear, you want to get it simple, and you want to get it in such a way that when you click into it, most importantly for your own benefit, when you click into what your story really is, everything else gets easy. The hard part is, is avoiding the story and doing what people often do and come to me um, doing, sadly, although I can completely relate, is they make a product and then they come to me and they say, okay, we need a story. But the point is they did it backwards. They made it, and they, but they can't figure out why it's not selling or they can't figure out why they've lost their enthusiasm or they can't figure out exactly what the right strategy is. The thing is your story is your strategy. When you are clear about the story only you can tell, when you get connected to that, when you get connected to the voice of that, when you start thinking off center, when you connect with that, you will roll. Everything else will be harder, harder, harder work. Um, you know, um, so here's another tip, and, I, and uh, another way in which you can start thinking about how to make this easier. An example, uh, I have a very good friend who used to work for a, a, a a, a corporation, and she was the only woman on the board of this corporate, you know, involved in this. Uh, and it was uh, very, very intimidating people. And I used to say to her, well, what do you do to become less intimidated? She said, well, I picture them in their underwear. I just picture them all sitting there in their underwear, and then I don't feel nervous about whatever I have to say or present. So my suggestion to you, when you think about your story, and, you're, and it can be very intimidating, especially when your head doesn't work this way, even, or isn't wired this way, even when your head is, even if you're a really creative person, as I am to a large extent, um, you know, it can, it can be intimidating. Think of your audience as being the people that you want to speak to. Think of these people as being four years old and waiting for somebody to tell them a story. Because although that may sound ridiculous to you, truly, that's what's going on. You, I, they are all, you know, grown-ups, little kids in sheep's clothing, waiting to be delighted, waiting to, be, to have something that they can go, oh, my God, you've just opened my eyes to something, waiting to have a story that they can then repeat and tell. And it's your job as a store, as a brand, as a business to give them a story they can tell. Meaning, you know, you want to make sure your story is so that it's a story that's repeatable, memorable, simple, um, and uh, is truly, for as low tech as it is, your highest technology and your best chances to really, really soar. So let me let me let me look at my let me look here for a second if we might at my story notes. Um, yes, yeah, so to imagine that what that's what they're looking for. Um, and, and here's another tip, a really important tip of what a story is not, because a lot of people ask me this. People say, I've got an about us. Isn't that my story? No. I mean, you can, you know, it's not, it's, it's an about us. 
Your about us is a really important. Your about is very, very important. It shows people how you, you know, in a, in a very short way, how you relate to them, how you understand their problem. I mean, how you like in my case. I mean, I, I have, uh, a, in addition to the story, the very, very short form story that I told you, I have had a lot of twists, twists and turns and roads and, you know, stops and careers and everything else. And I've had a lot of work pulling together who I am. You know, um, you, how you, you know, you, but you want in your about us to just give them a really brief description of who you are, who you work with, why that should matter to them, and that you relate to their problem. So, which is to say, for somebody who's, I've published 20 books, I've had books, you know, made, you know, almost, almost, almost made into movies, et cetera, et cetera. I do a lot of writing. I help clients with content. When it came to my own story, really, really tough. Seeing yourself. Seeing the big picture of who you are by yourself is kind of like trying to see your face, your own face, without a mirror. It's really, really difficult. It takes, it's wasting so much time and money, and I did it for years, and I understand it. I completely understand it. And I, for whatever reason, well, I think I know the reason. I think the reason is, is that because I see, I, when I listen to people, I'm hearing, the, I'm listening for the great story. I'm listening for the universal story. I'm listening for the story they have that they can't hear. I'm listening for the story that makes them competitive. And most of all, I'm listening for the story that not only tells their story, it's not just about your story. It's about their story, your audience's story. It's about understanding who they are and really, really doing some deep digging into who they are. So now I, I suspect that um, I would love to be able to tell you that here are three simple steps to telling a story. They are very simple, but they're not easy in the, term, in the sense of, First do this, then do that, then do this. If I had these three steps, you would not have a unique story. You know, and if you're going to follow, um, you can't follow the crowd and stand out from them at the same time. You need to think off center. So the three steps that I would suggest is, first of all, basically acknowledging that you're only, that you have something in you, that you have a reason. It's not just your why, as a lot of people say, ask me, do I start with why? I start with what? I start with what's missing out there, what was, what's going on here, what do, I want, why, what do I want to give to people, what is it that I have in my product or my service that can really influence and change things. Um, and what's going to delight people? What's going to have meaning to people? Because if you just know your story, and I'm sure, you know, if you've ever been in a conversation with somebody who uh, makes you think of the expression, so enough about me, tell me about me, um, you know, um, it's not that interesting. The best brand stories are telling your story and my story, which is why we want to follow them. So the three things you can do, the very simple things you can do, is begin by considering the possibility that you are an artist with a story, with, an art, with a wonderful story that has and, and needs to be told, that perhaps other, even though we've not necessarily been regarding it as this, the best brands know this, they've known this for years, and they live on this. They survive on this. Um, and I've worked with um, a lot of them who, for years, I mean, a couple of decades at least, have not talked about their story because they thought they had this big secret. But your story is your business strategy. That's it. It is, the bot it is your bottom line, it, and it's what makes the bottom line. So consider that you need it. Consider that you have one and consider that it's already there. So this is not something that, unlike a product, you have to build and come up with a prototype. It's already in you. And if it's not there, you probably need to reconsider what you're doing. But I suspect wildly that it's in there. So that said, um, you know, uh, you have because you have to know you have to know their story in order, in order to understand yourself. You're so there's another example, story-wise. Um, I went to see the Steve Jobs movie last weekend. I don't know how many of you have seen it. Um, love the movie. Love Michael Fassbender. Know, it, know it's largely phys, uh, you know, fictionalized. Who cares? It's a story. 
you know, they're all stories. The whole story of life is a story. We're making everything up. We're making up our meaning. And Aaron Sorkin did an incredible job. But there was something really profoundly deep that reminded me of the whole brand strategy of, um, of Apple that most people aren't familiar with. And what it was, there was a line in there in which, uh, first of all, he was arguing, I think it was with um, Waz, uh, they were talking about um, product, and, and, and he was kept saying, this is a piece of art, and, I, and whoever was referring to him said, no, it's crap. And he said, no, it's art, it's crap. And, you know, and then Steve Jobs would, would reply with, uh, each time he would reply with something I'm not going to say because it's not nice. But the point is, is that, it, and he knew that he had art, and most importantly, his story was, he kept saying, I want to change the status quo. I want to change the status quo. And that was the story. And so if you were to be part of a, of a, a branding meeting a while ago at Apple, and they asked you, and, you, they, and I asked you, what do you think the whole brand, the whole story concept is of Apple, um, you might not know, or you might, that their whole story is based on what they what they give, what they want to give is freedom of expression. When I've asked people on many occasions, what do you think the, the, the brand story or what do you think the, the branding taglines, if you are, of Apple was, they n never guess that. They think it's about creativity. They think it's about, you know, having fun. They think it's about all these different things, but it's really good. It's about freedom. They want to give people freedom. If you happen to go walk into... Starbucks several years ago and sat in on one of their brand meetings, what you would hear them say it had nothing to do with the coffee. It had to do with who they wanted to be in, in your life. And who they wanted to be in your life was number three. Now, can you guess what number three was or is? No. I'm guessing I'm going to end say that because maybe you can, maybe you can. But the thing of it is, is that first, they wanted you to think of your house, then they wanted to think of you what where you went to school or business, and then Starbucks. Those are the three most important places in your life. That's how they wanted their story to be known. So if that helps you in some way, is to take a look and recognize what do you want your product to be to other people. And when you start to think of that, what is your product to other people? What does it mean outside of the features and the benefits of it? What what do you want it to mean? If you start to look into that for yourself, you will um, begin to understand your story. And now, in the last little time that I have, how much little time do I have? Do I have a little time? Yeah, you have a little time. Okay. I want to make it even simpler. For those of you who are going, this is way over my, you might be thinking this is way too complicated for me. And by the way, I'm hoping that if you have any, you know, that you're welcome to check out, please check out my website. Um, which is Leah, L-E-A-H-K-O-M-A-I-K-O.com. And um, there's all sorts of blog information there. And check it out. I'd love to have you connect with my blog. And also, there's a place for you to get in touch with me. And just, um, you know, let me know what's cooking with you, what's going on with your story. I usually write back to people because I'm a writer. But just to end this with this very simply, I'm going to make this about as simple as you can get, and very profound, and I, I want you to recognize, to, if, if you're looking and you're thinking, this person is just, she's asking to think off center, but now this is way off the top. I want to tell you that I've used this book to teach many, many, many people how to begin to write their brand story in courses and in boardrooms. So I know it works. It's a great book. It's a textbook, brand text, branding textbook. It's called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs um, by two wonderful kids book writers. And I'm just going to read you the first three pages because if you get this, you can begin to write your own. You'll begin to understand what this is. And I'm going to read this to you. I won't show you the pictures, but they're here. Um, everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody's ever heard my side of the story. And then it goes on. It's such a great book. Get this book. It's so much fun. But the point is he retells his story. And the thing of it is, is most of us start off thinking everybody knows the story of what my technology is. Everybody knows the story of the skincare product. Everybody knows what this stuff is. 
But if you really, when you really start to look at what's in you that has a story to tell, start looking for that part of you that says, yeah, but nobody knows my side of the story. And then just start putting it out there, playing with the sentences, whatever, and start speaking from and writing from what's my side of the story. I know there's a lot of competition out there. I know all that stuff, but nobody knows my side of the story. And nobody will ever know your story or tell your story the way you can tell your story. And really nobody else has your story. Whether or not you choose to keep trying to tell somebody else's story is, of course, your choice. That's what so many people do. Um, but, you know, I know you've got so much better than that in you, so I hope you won't go that route or struggle with it, or it's certainly as long as many other people do. So I know I've been talking a lot and um, probably stirring up a whole bunch of question marks, big ones, and so um, I'm wondering if there's any, if there's anything that needs to be answered I've asked out there that anything came through. I don't have any questions for you. Okay, per perfect, no questions, great. So um, in that case, uh, again, let me give you my website. It's www.leahkomaiko.com. Please come check it out. Um, check onto my blog. Email me. You know, I'll give you 15 minutes free time. You want to talk? We can just kind of just tell me where you're at with your story. Maybe I can give you a little hint. Be happy to do that. Just let me know on your contact that, that you heard me on the call. That you heard me on the on this conference together. And um, please. Uh, remember that the best brands tell the best stories and that you've got one in you and to think off-center because uh, it'll help you get simple, it'll help you have more fun and most importantly from my experience it'll actually at the end of the day at the end of each day, especially those ones that you want to pull your hair out or somebody else's heart or hair out, it'll help you keep this thing we call passion that is so important and enthusiasm and boldness and really fun. God forbid I should use the word in business, some fun and you know, and a little bit of laughs because it's you, it's yours. And everything else that we try and do without a story is real, real hard to be enthusiastically bold and most importantly to have influence and to make change, make a real change for yourself and for other people. So I thank you. I'm so glad to be a part of this technology. And I hope you got some value. I sure did. Thanks. Well, thanks, Leah. I really, I, uh, I really appreciate. Uh, there were some really great things that I took away. In fact, one of the things that uh, you said is um, something that actually a mentor of mine said, which was, "You can't be a trendsetter if you're always a trend follower." Back in my days when I was uh, young and dumb and, and in fashion, and not that fashion is a, a dumb trade, but it, it just I, I remember that stuck with me. And uh, and I think. And, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think one of the things I heard too is, is part of the story is to come from a place of truth. And when you come from a place of truth, um, you find a purpose. And, and it's not about going through the motions and it's not about just working to work, but rather you're working for a cause, you're working towards a goal. And, and that, that's, I think, where, where that honesty and the authenticity uh, shines. And I think that's what sets sets people apart from their competitors or their colleagues and 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 um, it's something that I think that you know stands out right and I mean for marketing terms would be the value prop I mean is that a fair statement it's a fair statement it's a clear statement it's an eloquent statement and it's spot on yeah it's like you know everyone talks about the importance of being authentic if being authentic was so easy everyone would do it yeah right <laughs> Yeah, and you're right, and it's you gotta go to some really interesting places sometimes. And yeah, you go some really interesting places in yourself, and they're not that hard to get to. It's far easier than building product and trying to raise money and realizing you don't have anything. Right, and at the end of the day, the the product is a reflection of the people. So if people, you know, they are your people create. by people to not really product. Absolutely. Okay. Well, you know, thank you again for doing this. I, 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 I felt like your story had to be heard. Uh, I hope that it was uh, valuable to the folks on the phone and on and on the uh, and on the uh, on the webinar. And um, we will be posting this on our website as soon as uh, we make it all pretty, and uh, and we'll let everyone know. Okay. And so we'll catch you in the next one in a month. Right. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.